Hi guys. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I had to put on my reaching hat. Hear me out. Hi, thank you for clicking. Um, I was doing my makeup and I was not expecting this to happen, but it did. It's a lot more intense than I was planning, but it was like 50 shades of blue. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back to my channel. You know how much I love you guys. If you are new here, hello. This is me. I wear a tinfoil hat. I talk about true crime and conspiracies. So if that interests you, please subscribe and we can all jump down the rabbit hole together. Welcome to the tinfoil family. I think that's what we're called. Some people want to call it the hear me out family, but it just doesn't have that same ring to it. Don't you think? As always, my sources, my Lori Vallow playlist, I have a bunch of Lori Vallow videos will be listed down below. Okay, let's get into it. I first found out about a vow when I was looking into Chad Daybell's beliefs. I spent my actual real money because this is a paid membership and I paid and I got access and they're probably gonna kick me out because I found this whole thing of them talking crap about people who do exactly what I did, which is log in just to snoop around and report back. So what is a vow, you may ask? I'm gonna tell you. It is a online LDS members only website slash forum slash community. It is basically a prepper website with a religious element that's also very mystical. So there's a lot of visions and prophecies and we're gonna get into all of it. LDS Avow actually has a YouTube channel but there's no videos on there right now. But I did manage to find a link to an unlisted video that was uploaded on their channel. Here's a clip of that video just to give you a little bit of an idea of what they believe in and what they're all about. I stand before the church this day and raise the warning voice. It is a prophetic voice, for I shall say only what the apostles and prophets have spoken concerning our day. It is a voice calling upon the Lord's people to prepare for the troubles and desolations which are about to be poured out upon the world without measure. So Chad and the gang were all part of this Avow website. Now Avow was also very closely linked to preparing a people and I'll be getting into that later. But for now, what you need to know is that Melanie Gibb, Lori, Chad, Jason Mao, who we're also gonna talk about, Julie Rowe, who we're also gonna talk about, all of these people were on a vow and were pretty active members. Melanie Gibb posted a seven page letter on a vow. A vow is a very tight knit community. They actually call themselves a vowites. A vow is run by Christopher Parrot or Parrot Jr. Now, uh, let me apologize in advance because I have a tendency to say and pronounce names and things completely horribly. For example, in my last video, I kept saying Baroni like baloney when in fact it's pronounced Moroni. So my apologize. I did not mean to say that. <laughs> so I'm just gonna be calling him Christopher. Now, Christopher is a very, very close friend of Chad and Lori. Chad was one of the early members on the site. He was very active on the site. A lot of the people who are on the site were very big fans of Chad and Julie, which we'll be getting into. But Christopher always, there's tons of links that he posted to Chad's books, like links to purchase Chad's books. He was always supporting and promoting Chad. Their relationship, you could tell, was pretty close. So I also found this East Idaho News, which by the way, they are so good. They have been covering this case amazingly especially nate eaton he is just killing it so they posted an article all the way back in february 23rd 2020 about a vow this is what east idaho news said that christopher posted on a vow several weeks before february 23rd 2020 this is a message that christopher posted but he said that it's actually from chad so i'm gonna read you a quote that chad wrote but Christopher posted, okay? Thanks for the update. The issue is that people are linking me to Julie's, parentheses, row beliefs, which I studied but rejected. 
Lori and I have been absolutely silent for three months. I'm constrained by my lawyers from saying more until the legal mess is complete, but be assured I will be back. Hopefully the subscribers will be there when I can fully return to GRI and tell my experiences. I appreciate your support, Chad. If you don't know, GRI stands for Global Research Initiative. And this was a thread that Chad posted on frequently. And there were a lot of Avow members who were also members of this subreddit. I mean, that's not the right way to say it, but that's how I picture it in my brain. It's a subreddit of Avow called GRI. A lot of people were members of GRI and would like look forward to Chad's postings on GRI. All right, so back to Christopher. Now, after Christopher posted that first message, he posted another message later on. This was a message he would soon regret. He would regret it because he was totally, totally defending Chad and Lori. Let me read you the post. The first thing on the post is this huge banner, Vindicated. Chad and Lori called me tonight and we spoke for almost a full hour. Finally, they were able to lay out the entire saga from their side of the story, from the beginning all the way to today. And I am here to tell you I feel totally vindicated in standing up for Chad. Sue, my wife, and I now fully understand what has been going on from day one and what their battle plan has been all along. What's been going on with the kids? What's been going on with the two different sets of lawyers? What's been going on with the police, sheriff, FBI? The marriage, moving to Hawaii, Tammy's death, etc., etc., etc. It took them 54 minutes just to walk us through the whole ordeal. Those of you who choose to think the worst of our friend and throw him under the bus and believed all of the lies, I'm doing that because it's capitalized, that have been posted on social media and in the lamestream news will have some crow to eat after their story is released. And their story, in all of its detail, is coming soon. No surprise, the court of public opinion once again got it all wrong. Mm-hmm. Hmm. As I have said from the beginning, this is a nasty, ugly custody case involving major sums of money with everything being driven by grandma. And yes, there is so much more going on just beneath the surface of the water that hasn't been put out yet. And yes, Chad is writing a new book about this whole drama. <laughs> oh, wow. To those of you who chose to stand with Chad, he expresses his heartfelt appreciation. In Lori and Chad's words, the chaff have been separated from the wheat in this sifting. They know with a certainty who their real friends are. The next step now is to patiently wait for the police department to release the findings of the autopsy. Once that is done, then you can expect me to begin to put out some of the long awaited details everyone has been begging for. I don't know exactly the date of this posting because again, it has been removed, but on that article I mentioned from East Idaho News, they mentioned this. So it had to have been on or before February 23rd, 2020. Then Christopher, who said that we were all gonna eat crow, the court of public opinion, right? Remember, look at this post that he did very recently. My apology concerning Chad and Lori Daybell. This was posted on June 10th, 2020. Bodies of Tylee and JJ were found, the remains, but at this moment of his posting, they had not been positively identified as Tylee and JJ. It's pretty obvious now that I was lied to and that my trust and faith were horribly abused. I watched the live broadcast along with all the rest of you and have read all the news reports this morning and feel utterly heartbroken. There are just not words to express my feelings for having been taken advantage of by Chad and Lori. It would appear I was dead nuts wrong. And unless Chad wins the lotto and the DNA analysis comes back showing the bodies are not in fact of those two missing children, he and Lori will be spending a very long time in prison. That said, all previous bans on discussion of this matter are now lifted. You are free to discuss any and all things related to Chad. I need to go find a good recipe for crow because I am going to be eating quite a bit of it for a while now. He then posts a picture of a fine dish of gourmet, locally sourced and organic crow. Mmm, bon appetit, Christopher. 
Once the ban was lifted, an internal conflict emerged on a vow between two groups. You had the people who had been defending Chad all along, who were either still defending him, which we'll talk about in a second, or completely like, oh, we were duped, we were duped, it's not our fault, you know, Chris, it's not your fault, you were manipulated and lied to. And then there were other people who were like, hold on, I was silenced. I was talking about this in the early days and I said something was wrong with Chad and this whole thing seemed fishy and you guys bullied me, you called me names, you basically ran me off this platform. People were pissed and you kind of had one member in particular who was complaining about another member who was basically ran off of a vow and then she was talking about how she was about to leave and some people were like no don't leave stay and other people were just like not saying anything and you started to see some division where people on the platform really wanted to keep talking about it and following the case and other people who were like when are we going to be over this we're done with them can we talk about something else because what you guys need to understand is just how huge chad was on a vow if you go on a vow and you just do a search for his name you'll find so many posts either the post topic or the comments that are talking about Chad and gushing about Chad and his visions and prophecies and predictions and asking questions and talking about whether this earthquake is going to happen or they're going to go to this camp and where are they going to build the new Jerusalem should they go to Arizona should they go to Utah like they were following him. Not only were people talking about him and his conferences of preparing a people a lot on a vow, but I went and looked at his profile to see what he was talking about. So here is his profile. You can see here that he's been a member since June 10th, 2011. His last ever comments on his page or visible activity on the forum is on September 29th, 2019 which by the way is five days after Tylee's birthday and six days after JJ goes missing. Might be a link to why he stopped posting after that happened. I found that interesting and I just wanted to point it out. To understand the story and Chad and Avow, you need to know Julie Rowe. She is a person that's new to this channel. I have never spoken about her before. I've read about her in passing, but until I joined Avow and really looked into it, I did not realize how involved she was with Chad and this whole preparing a people slash Avow platform. Julie Rowe first met Chad in February 2014 on Avow. He messaged her and that's where their relationship started. Chad would end up becoming Julie's book publisher and Julie and Chad's books were huge on a vow. I'll let Julie explain in her own words her situation and who she is and what she believes. So I'm going to play you snippets of an interview. I have the full thing linked below, but I'm just going to play snippets. It's actually over half an hour long. Here are the clips. Welcome to Eyes Open. Today is January 9th, 2019. I'm Eric Smith. And on this show, I interviewed Julie Rowe, who is a gifted woman who has unique visionary insights. Um, she has gifts of sound and she can hear things and she has understanding that comes from ancestors and other beings on the other side of the veil who talk to her. And we like to interview her so that she can give us another perspective on current events that are going on. One of those current events right now is the Chad Daybell story who Julie and I both know. Chad Daybell contacted me off of a prepper site. So he found me and he, as an author and publisher, wanted to publish my story. I met Chad and Tammy and four of their children in Utah in July of 2014. I'm gonna throw out some ideas to you guys, some things that I've heard from the other side of the veil in the last several weeks, actually leading up to Chad Daybell and Tammy Daybell and, and Tammy's passing. Now, Tammy Daybell is a good friend of mine. I say is because I still communicate with her on the other side of the veil. So Tammy Daybell passed away. The the um, 911 call that Chad made, he made it early in the morning around six and the medical examiner thought that the time of death was about two in the morning for, Chad, for Tammy Daybell on October 19th. Chad's oldest daughter, Emma, had called um, one of my friends who had gotten a hold of my head of security to notify us that this had happened. I will admit that I have fear energy um, that I'm clearing out related to Chad Daybell. I in no way want to betray his trust. At the same time, 
I have a greater mission to perform. And my mission, first and foremost, is to warn people on this planet of anything I see that's dark, of anything I see that's not okay going on on this planet. Regardless and of who that comes from, even if it's your friends. Regardless of who that comes from. Mm-hmm. Yes. I see darkness related to Lori Vallow. I see darkness related to Chad. Last time we talked, you had a little bit different message, and it was more like along the lines of Chad is innocent, everything's okay, he didn't do anything wrong. Okay. So has your story changed? Well, let me let me clarify that. I never said he didn't do anything wrong. Okay. I just said he didn't hurt the kids and he didn't hurt Tammy. There were some things I confronted him on last February and he did not like that. Um, He basically cut me off. Chad Daybell was a jerk to me. What can you tell us about this cult? Is this real? Do you know if he's part of something? So I'm going to clear this up. Preparing a people is not a cult. That's a group of people that got together that believe in Christ and they believe in end times prophecies. Chad spoke with them a lot and he did a lot of work with Mike and Nancy James. Chad Daybell has been involved in some things that I don't agree with. It sounds cultish and weird and or slash like she has some serious mental problems and I need her and Chad to hear me loud and clear. She was not sealed to Moroni and she is not a god. I have seen things going on in Chad's life for a year related to Lori Vallow from a distance using my gifts. I see Chad going to the beach with Lori and the kids. I see Chad on a small island in Hawaii. I hear it's Lanai, L-A-N-A-I. The kids are safe for now. I can't guarantee you what Lori and Chad will do with those kids once they hear my view or once they know they're outed. I have not trusted Chad for a year. I used to trust him. I still want to trust him, but this I know. Tammy's happy. She's in a good place. Charlos Vallow is, every time I see him, he's in a dark place. He's sitting, he likes to sit in the corner of this room on this wooden chair with his hands in his face, like his head down. And um, he's struggling. And he's beating himself up is kind of the energy, you know. I see the kids laughing, joking around. They're playing cards. They're playing games. They're watching TV. And they're going to the beach. That was as of yesterday. Today is Thursday. What's today's date? Thursday the 9th. 9th. That was as of Wednesday the 9th. I still saw them actually Wednesday the 8th. Fun. Wednesday the 8th, sorry. Thanks for joining us. Okay. One more thing, Eric. <laughs> yes. This, this is not going away soon. We're going to see this into February, right. maybe into the spring. And then we have other big things coming in the spring, you guys. So if you have not paid attention to what's going on in our world, I suggest you wake up. Okay. So, so Chad's following was fierce, right? Very, very fierce. As you can see, Lori killed her kids for him and a bunch of other things. There's a lot of devotion to Chad and his prophecies and his beliefs. To the point, Chad still has defenders on a vow. I found a post that shocked me. Okay, now this was after remains had been found, but they still weren't identified as JJ and Tylee. So this was on June 10th, the same day that Christopher posted his eating crow post. We still don't know the facts. We have only been fed a very slanted, one-sided series of opinions through the media and a picture of Chad with increased contrast to make his eyes appear dark. Chris likely knows a few things we have not been made privy to. As for the remains, I will be very surprised if they actually prove to be related to the children in any way. They don't even have anything to charge Chad with yet. In my personal opinion, there appears to be a witch hunt based on suspicions and accusations by extended family members trying to flush out who they put the children into the care of because there is a very substantial life insurance payout from when Lori's brother defended himself against attack by her ex-husband. What a crock of poop. I could be wrong, but I doubt it. You're wrong and you shouldn't have doubted it. Psycho. So that's just to give you an idea of how devoted some of these people were to Chad and the blinders, the blinders that these people have on. So then of course the remains were uh, identified and people started posting that on a vow and a lot of crow was being eaten on a vow. Okay. 
Now I want to talk about preparing a people because preparing a people is a huge piece to this puzzle. The preparing a people conferences were a big part of Aval. You saw postings promoting those conferences all the time. And then you saw a lot of people who would talk about their experiences after the conference gushing and giving the people on the forum a breakdown of what happened with each speaker. And Chad Daybell was like, almost in every single conference and they would go on and talk about his visions and how amazing he was and yada 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 jason mao was also one of those people melanie gibb lori vallow all of them were involved with preparing a people either on the podcast the conferences or both who what what is preparing a people let me tell you preparing a people is an organization and they claim that their mission is to quote help prepare the people of this earth for the second coming of jesus christ the owners of preparing a people are a married couple and their names are michael and nancy james and they go by the username color my media on a vow they are trying to distance themselves from chad and pretend like they weren't even that close and he didn't really do that much and blah 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 but that's not true they actually moved from utah to idaho to follow chad after he moved from Utah to Idaho. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you don't do that with just anybody. That is some following, follower, devotee, cult thing, in my opinion. Allegedly, don't sue me, please. When am I gonna stop doing this? Never. There's also this quote from James who says, Chad is one of my favorite people, while he's like patting him on the shoulder and as I had said earlier, these members are constantly gushing about the speakers at the Preparing a People conference. And one of those speakers is a man by the name of Jason Mao. Jason Mao was brought to my attention by an amazing subscriber. She brought this to my attention a while ago, like before um, Chad got arrested and his house was searched for a second time and all of that. She had told me about him and how she had seen this movie that he was in as a set medic and he had a small part in the movie and this movie was about zombie children who go on and like attack the adults and it's like this very eerie similarity to what was said about the children being zombies and stuff and this subscriber who i love was telling me to look into it and so i did the first thing i want to show you is the trailer to this movie and then there's like a small behind the scene clip of them talking to jason mao and he's talking about what he did for the movie watch it's very disturbing by the way it's super super creepy so that's your little disclaimer um here you go you lost her it's all the kids all the kids in the town are gone nobody's coming for us are they my daughter is very sick. Oh my god. Go, go, go. Jason. I am the safety coordinator on Speak No Evil. The biggest concern I have uh, coordinating safety out here is dealing with all the extras that we have. We have a ton of kids out here. You know, one scene they're uh, possessed by demons, the next, you know, having a good time. And and, uh, and I've kind of really kind of taken them under my wing. Um, just tried to be a, a good friend with them, somebody they can confide in, somebody they can, they can feel safe around. When I found out that he was an ex-cop, I remembered something. A signal came in. <laughs> the signal reminded me of Lori Vallow, Melanie Gibb, poor little Tylee Ryan, when they were on that body cam footage in the police station because they talked about Jason Mao. Here are the clips. You told her how crazy I was and why I was like that. So. Hmm. What was your name? Melanie. Melanie. Your last name? Gibb. G I B B. I caught him cheating and I had evidence and I told him about it and he travels a lot for business so I told him about it and told him not to come home and that his stuff would be gone and that his car would be gone and I was like, <laughs> so he's a little mad. <laughs> so 
And my friend told me, my friend that's a police officer, he said, go file a report, file a restraining order, all that stuff. That's fine. Yeah, that was very smart. Yeah, and Jason's sweet. And then I see this guy that I know, like, just like. Our good friend. Just, a just like, officer. right in front of me on the side of the road. And I'm oh, like, well. he looks like Jason. <laughs> I'm like, hold on, I got, that's Jason. He's a police guy. I'm going to go. So he goes, I'm like, Jason, what are you doing over here? He goes, I was just going to visit and give Oh, yeah? I'm like, hey, I just want to tell you what's going on. He goes, yeah, go down to the police office now. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, we're going to have to put Jason and Thor and all our people. Yeah, our friends. <laughs> and our friend was downtown Phoenix police officer, and he, he talks a lot of those stories. <laughs> so your buddy Jason, you're saying, Jason is he's Phoenix? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. Phoenix. Yeah, he, was, he had an incredible case where when he was taking the bad guy down, his hamstrings pulled off his legs or hip, and he was completely taken. His hamstrings or the guy he was taking down? No, he's oh. so he was no, he can no longer perform as a police officer because of that. Wow. It took his, it took his, his ability to work. Wow. How long was he on? He was on his bed for three, three years. years. It took him three years him. to, oh, wow. um, to... His story um, is really incredible. It is yeah. incredible story. It took him three years to walk again. So as you can see here, Jason Mao was a very good friend of Lori's, Chad's, Melanie's. He was part of the gang. Another thing about Jason Mao is that he is an ex-cop, a veteran, and he also writes LDS doomsday books. His books are also similar to Julie Rowe, published by Chad Daybell's publishing company. He is got a very interesting past. I was able to find this master Reddit post about Jason Mao in which they make these claims. They say that he had reason to be in Rexburg, Idaho at around the time the children went missing. They say that he was there in the fall semester of 2019 in BYU. He was teaching a class there. They also say that he checked in on Facebook in Rexburg a few times in September 2019. There's also a leaked email from the investigation that references that Jason Mao was actually the one who sealed or married Lori and Chad in the temple. And this is the weird part. He was acting as a character in his book called Captain Moroni. I, I don't even know what to say about that. He has a not so flattering past as a police officer. He actually likes to say the story that you guys heard in the clip that I showed you, the body cam footage, of, footage about how he was heroically catching a bad guy and then he like, his hamstrings like fell off his legs or some weird thing. Before all that, he had a lot of complaints on him as a police officer. A lot of them have to do with him uh, not respecting or following the law and also being just kind of lazy. He got caught sleeping in his car on duty when he was supposed to be security for homicide investigator. Uh, investigator. He also, in 2006, he resigned before an internal affairs investigation was conducted. He wrote sloppy reports and shorter reports that should have been longer. People started getting concerned that his performance was below the level of the standard. And so he was actually in the process of his 90 day reevaluation period when he resigned. Quote, they couldn't convince him he was doing anything wrong. He felt like he could go somewhere else and not be as scrutinized as he was there. Also, he was previously reprimanded for being disrespectful towards a supervisor and he was also reprimanded in 2002 for entering a business and failing to identify himself as an officer. October. 18 of 2018, Richard Jason Mao, that's actually his full name, filed a lawsuit against the city of Phoenix. So this case is actually sealed, so I couldn't figure out what the information was about this case other than the fact that it's actually still pending as of now. What do you guys think? Do you think Jason Mao was somehow involved or helped Chad in any way, either knowingly or unknowingly? Do you guys think that Julie Rowe is reliable? Do you believe what she says? Do you think she's cuckoo? What do you guys think about Avow? Do you think it's a hotbed for extremism or do you think they just kind of got caught up in this crazy thing with these crazy people and they're now kind of like being treated as guilty by association? Me personally, what I think, I think that I'm not so sure about Julie Rowe and Jason Mao, how deep they were, but I think that some 
people on Avow are lost, which is why I think Melanie, when she talks about some people believe in his teachings still and his teachings are dangerous, they lead to people dying. She wrote that letter trying to warn them that the adversary was what was giving Chad these visions, not anything of goodness. It's evil and la la la, all that stuff. So I don't know. I feel like Avow, it's 50 50. Also, not that anybody cares, but ever since i became a member of avow they have been sending me incessant emails every day and they're such fear-mongering doomsday inducing you know type of emails if you really believe everything they say in these emails you would definitely think the world is going to end soon i can see why these people on the site are terrified and think they have to prepare for the end times and that it's around the corner that's all i have for you right now regarding avow i don't ever want to look at that platform ever again i'm so over it at this point they're probably going to kick me out i heard them talking so much crap about people who do what i just did but whatever i'm doing it for you guys i don't care what they think about me i care what you guys think about me and uh that's what i have for you so thank you so much for watching please subscribe if you haven't already and i will see you guys in the next one